Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 2 in our Melee AI series. In the previous episode we set up the player character and their animation uh, uh, blueprint and blend spaces, things like that. And in that episode I told you to do exactly the same for the enemy. And I mean it, it's exactly the same. The only thing you're changing is the skeleton and the animations you're using. So I've done that in between this, the last episode and this episode. So here's my enemy character set up with their animations and animation blueprints and so forth. And again it's exactly the same. So just do exactly what you did in the first episode again for your uh, enemy. So in this episode we're going to start work on the AI component of our enemy. Most notably, we're going to work on the hoarding mechanic, and that's the part where an enemy will run up towards you and stay a certain distance away from you before they're going for an attack. And whilst at that distance, they may hover about a bit, strafe left and right, you know, just dance around a little bit, look busy before they're going for the attack. So um, let's get cracking with that. Now, first of all, I would recommend, first of all, going to my AI series um, to watch that, to understand how AI works. Uh, I will be explaining things again here, but I'll go into far more detail in the actual dedicated series for that. So if you haven't watched that one yet, watch that one and then come back to this. That's my recommendation anyway. But without further ado, let's head on with what we've got to do here. So the first thing we need to set up is our AI component. So we need first of all the AI controller. So go to new blueprint class and your class section, section down here, we're going to search for AI controller. And find that and click select and I'm gonna call my one enemy underscore AI I'm then gonna go into make an artificial intelligence behavior tree and call it enemy underscore BT for behavior tree and in that same section a blackboard with these components now in we need to link these all up so they will communicate together so the AI controller is the puppeteer to the enemy AI actor puppet so we need to link that up together. So open up your melee enemy actor and find in the section in the class defaults called pawn and you'll see AI controller class. You can choose from the drop down your enemy AI. Hit compile and close that one. Next we need to tell our AI controller to use this behavior tree. So open up your AI controller, go to the event graph and on begin play we can tell it to run behavior tree. And the behavior tree is simply a decision making tool that AI system has in Unreal. From the drop down for BT asset, choose your behavior tree and hit compile. We're done with that. And finally, we need to go to our behavior tree and you want to make sure your blackboard asset is the correct one in the right hand corner here, details saying enemy BB, which is correct there. We're going to go over to blackboard and the blackboard is a container of uh, various variables that we can use on our behavior tree. So the first one we're going to add here is a target location, which is a vector. So go new key vector and call it target location. And hit save. So now we've got all those four things connected up. So the way this works is we're going to tell the AI to find the player's location and tend to move to that location while keeping a certain distance away from that location. So let's go to our behavior tree and set up the basics here. So from the root, drag from the bottom and add a selector. And then we're going to drag from the selector and choose a sequence. A selector may have multiple things selected. So for example, if I just add another sequence here and another one here, the way a selector works is it will go down always to the left hand side first and if this is successful that is it the selector will stop and these two won't run. If this one fails then it will go down the next one and check if this one's successful. If that one fails again it will go back up and select the next one and it will keep doing that until it finds one that's successful. If it doesn't find any that are successful then the whole selector will fail and go back up the route. Whereas a sequence if I just do mop all of these. The way a sequence works is it will run all of them. So the sequence will start. If this is successful, rather than going back up and 
been successful overall, it will go back up and back down the next one. And it will keep going up and down the next one until it hits a fail. So if this sequence, this one here, the middle one fails, then this one here won't ever play. And that's how a sequence works. So what we'll be doing in this sequence here is handling the movement of our player character, or our enemy character. So the first thing we need to do is create a new task. And this task can be uh, able to find the player's location. So we go to new task in the top left hand corner. And before we go on, we're going to change its default name. Because at the moment, its default name is a bit ugly and unreadable. It is BT task underscore blueprint pace underscore new. So we'll change that. So go into your content browser and just change it to find player location underscore task. And open it back up. So this one's quite simple. It's just going to find the player's location and store it as a uh, blackboard ve uh, vector. So the first event is going to be the execute event. So receive execute AI. So when this task starts in the behavior tree, this is the first event that gets triggered. Once we're there, we're going to get the player character. And then from the return value, we're going to get the actor location. And that's how you get the player's location. We're then going to store that as a vector reference in our blackboard. So create new variable and we're going to go bb underscore target location. And the type for this is not vector, but instead it's a blackboard key selector. And you want to make sure it is editable. Now the target location uh, blackboard key, this key is sort of like a container of a value. So we need to drag this out, choose get, and then we have to tell it to set a value to it. So go set a value as a vector and plug that in to the execute and then plug your actor location into the value. With that done, the final thing is to tell it to finish the execute, making sure that you tick the success box so it knows the task was successful. We can now close this and now add it to our sequence. So find player location task. And you want to double check that the BB target location is set to the correct Blackboard key. If it is not, select it. And on the right hand side, you'll see you can change which key it uses. Next, we're going to use the move to function, the task, sorry. And this is really built into the game engine. So choose move to. Again, making sure that the move to is using the correct Blackboard key. And the acceptable radius is the thing we're going to change here. This is the radius of how far you want it to B before it stops moving towards the target. So if I put in something like uh, say 300 and tick the observe blackboard value changing, what that means is when the uh, value changes that's going to update the movement location. So tick that and that way it will update all the time. And this is the value that is um, when to detect when it should react to a change. So I'm going to change this up a little bit um, to tweak the sensitivity of how much it will change. So I'm going to turn this up to something like uh, 50. With that done, we're going to click save and we'll close that down. Now to test this out, we need to make sure we've got a nav mesh. So search for nav mesh in your left hand modes column and drag a nav mesh bounds volume out into the world and Make sure it is stretching across the whole entire width of the in uh, of the level. So I'm going to drag that out like so, and like so. If you want to toggle the green preview of the nav mesh, it's just P on your keyboard. Stretch it out. Make sure it covers the whole level. There we go. So now I hit play. And the enemy will run towards me and stay 300 uh, units away from me. And then he'll update and move towards a new location towards the player. Perfect. So what we'll do in the next episode is we'll work on his strafing. So whilst he's idle, he isn't just standing there. He was going to try and strafe and flank the player left or right. So once we get to that location, he's then going to choose a direction to go to and then sidestep around the player. So join us on the next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan where a donation of just $1 will get access to that video, plus many, many other benefits too. Thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. Uh, this wouldn't all be 
possible without you guys, so massive, massive thank you to all of you. If you like what I do, and you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, it helps us out greatly. And if you like or have questions, please leave a like and leave a comment below, and that would be fantastic. Thank you all, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye for now. See ya.